Let's look at another example of verifying the identity. And so here we have the cosecant of beta plus the cotangent of beta equals the sine of beta over one minus cosine of beta. And again, you gotta choose one side or the other and try to make you know, one side look like the other. And um, in this case, it is pretty even. Um, I think it actually does not matter which one you chose, choose as far as the left or the right. Since we normally choose the left, why don't we go ahead and choose the right one on this one. So we have the cosecant of beta plus the cotangent of beta equals the sine of beta over one minus the cosine of beta. And I had to rewrite that again because the reason I chose this side is I want to demonstrate a technique that um, sometimes you got to use. And it's not too obvious, but it does uh, come up once in a while. And the thing is, is you're just kind of, we're kind of looking at this thinking, well, I don't know what to do with this one right now. However, we're going to go ahead and we're going to multiply by the conjugate. And so I'm going to multiply by 1 plus the cosine of beta over 1 plus the cosine of beta. So over here we have the cosecant of beta plus the cotangent of beta equals the sine of beta, I'm going to go ahead and keep that out, 1 plus the cosine of beta all over, you get 1 plus cosine of beta minus cosine of beta minus cosine squared of beta. All right, so then we're going to have the cosecant of beta plus the cotangent of beta equals the sine of beta times 1 plus the cosine of beta all over, let's see here, we're going to get um, 1 minus the cosine squared of beta. And so notice that when we multiply by the conjugate up here, we end up with this cosine squared. And we like the cosine squared because it gives us that Pythagorean identity. So let's see what we can substitute in there. Sine squared of beta plus cosine squared of beta equals 1. So I'm going to substitute in for 1. So we have the cosecant of beta plus the cotangent of beta equals the sine of beta times 1 plus the cosine of beta all over sine squared of beta plus cosine squared of beta. So that's what I substitute in for 1 minus the cosine squared of beta. The cosine squares cancel out. So it's going to be this cosecant of beta plus the cotangent of beta equals the sine of beta times 1 plus the cosine of beta all over the sine squared of beta. Okay, something good happens here. The sine of beta and the sine squared of beta, one of those reduces. So we get the cosecant of beta plus the cotangent of beta equals 1 plus the cosine of beta all over the sine of beta. Good. All right, we're almost there. And then we gotta think, well, what can we do? And if you think about it, well, cosecant's one over sine, cotangent cosine over sine. Well, that's essentially what we have. We just have now have to split this apart. So the cosecant of beta plus the cotangent of beta is 1 over the sine of beta plus the cosine of beta over the sine of beta. So we have the cosecant of beta plus the cotangent of beta equals, well, 1 over sine is the cosecant of beta, cosine over sine is the cotangent of beta. And there you go. We have simplified that expression. Good. All right, let's try another example. Let's verify the tangent squared of theta over 1 plus the secant of theta equals 1 minus the cosine of theta all over the cosine of theta. Okay, now this is going to be an interesting technique. So we got to think about, well, do we want to choose this side or this side? 
And it's kind of hard, but I think what we're going to do is we're going to choose this side. And I'm going to show you another technique that's kind of neat. So I'm going to replace something with the tangent squared. So let's see here. Uh, we know that sine squared theta plus cosine squared of theta equals 1. And if I multiply everything by 1 over cosine, so we're going to get the tangent squared of theta plus 1 equals the secant squared of theta. Okay, so the tangent squared of theta is the secant squared of theta minus 1. Okay, so we're going to have the secant squared of theta minus 1 all over 1 plus this secant of theta equals 1 minus the cosine of theta all over the cosine of theta. Now, in this technique, I'm going to factor this. So secant squared of theta minus 1 becomes the secant of theta plus 1 times the secant of theta minus 1. And notice that our secant, well, this is the same as secant of theta plus 1. We can, that's a commutative type of thing, and so these cancel out. And so we end up with the following. The secant of theta minus 1 equals 1 minus the cosine of theta all over the cosine of theta. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take secant and turn it into 1 over cosine. And combine fractions, so we get 1 minus the cosine of theta over the cosine of theta equals 1 minus the cosine of theta over the cosine of theta. And there you go.